welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be covering molding with syntactic dough and epoxy systems. Now there are various ones on the market. Um, AdTech is probably the, the best quality one that I've found. It lasts the longest. It's also frightfully expensive and so I haven't been using that for quite some time. I've been using the Smooth-On system and I've been very happy with that. That's worked great for me. So that's what this, is, this mold here our old friend that we looked at in the last video. That's what this is made out of. It's made out of the uh, um, smooth, -on, smooth On system. So there are multiple parts to it. First is the uh, epoxy coat grey. There is also epoxy coat red. I don't care for the red so much if I'm running foam because it tends to tint the foam. I, I was getting a little bit of, of uh, crossover with the pigment so I prefer the grey. Uh, Freeform Air is the, is the syntactic dough that they produce and then the Epoxamide 100 is the laminating resin that I like and I use the 101 Fast Hardener so that it kicks it off much faster. We're also going to need some stir sticks, some uh, chip brushes of various sizes, some Fiberglass mat. I don't like anything too heavy. It, it, it's sort of the loosest that you can find. And then also some finishing cloth, some fiberglass finishing cloth. Again, I like the, the loosest mesh that you can find because all this really does is um, stops the spiky uh, fiberglass um, mat from, from poking your fingers and finishing the, the piece down nicely so that it's it's smooth, it doesn't jab your hands, and, uh, and it looks pretty. It sort of ties it all together. So we've got our old friend here that we, that we did last time. He's ready to mold. So uh, let's get started. So I'm going to use a one inch chip brush. Now we've got all this little detail in here. We've got stuff down in the nostrils there. and. Uh, the rest of it should be okay. It's mostly these cracks that I'm worried about getting air bubbles in. So we're going to just get some of this and we're going to sort of brush it over here. And then I'm going to use my breath to force it down into all of the detail there. Just to make sure that there's no air bubbles and it gets all of the detail now if you have an air gun you can certainly use that as well I've sometimes used an airbrush to uh, do the same the same thing but in a pinch your breath does fine now remember last time when we were claying this up that we actually gave it a good coat of the mold release. So you want to make sure you've done that before you do any kind of uh, work with this particular stuff because it's an epoxy uh, and so it sticks like crazy. So if you haven't released your base you uh, will run into some heartbreak. <laughs> so always make sure that you have released your base well, released your sculpt and especially the area which is forming the cutting edge. Now you can see that I'm gently putting it, I'm not like scrubbing it and causing air bubbles and, and stuff, uh, I'm just gently kind of brushing it over making sure it gets into all of the the creases, all of the crevices, all the way around the cutting edge. Now the cutting edge area likes to get little air bubbles in there. 
they get trapped and so we're going to just take a minute and blow all the way around the cutting edge to make sure that there is no area where there's a trapped bubble. Just want to lay down a little bit along here first. But you can see we've still got quite a bit in here so a little bit goes a long way with the gel coat and you don't need a super super thick coat although I would suggest making sure that it's reasonably reasonably covered. And we're going to take that just to the to this edge here. Don't take it over the edge. We only want to take it to the edge of the clay. Okay, so we've got that all the way around the edge there. Feeling a little lightheaded from that. My lung capacity is not what it once was. I played the clarinet for seven years and used to be pretty, pretty good with my lungs, but I guess I'm out of practice. sure that anything that was moved still hasn't uh, exposed any of the clay. Oh, we've got a little spot there on the touch point that's One area that it always loves to get air bubbles is right in the corner of the eye there. Always, always loves to get air bubbles there. So just really make sure that you've double checked that. Make sure they get right up there in the 
and the nostrils. Okay, and I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that covered and we'll come back when that's set, which usually takes about four hours with the 101 fast hardener and I'll see you then. Our gel coat is fully set. We're ready to go with the syntactic dough. You can see under here that the clay has started cracking and separating from being sitting there. Uh, this is actually a couple of days ago that we did that. I've been tied up doing other stuff so now we're ready to to get the dough done on that. So that's why I like the uh, the, the fast hardener, the 101 fast hardener because it uh, it kicks a gel coat before it could do that. If you use the normal one you end up with uh, cracks in your gel coat where the clay separates. So the syntactic dough we're using is the Freeform Air and it is a one to one by volume so I just used two of these cups and quite quite simply just uh, kind of pack it in just kind of mush it down so that you know that it's and I found just from my own experience that uh, two of these cups usually are enough to do a, a face like that. Now I only dig in with one hand because uh, you don't want to contaminate your contaminate your product so I really only touch the the white stuff with this one, you can see how it's got the residue on it. This one here is clean. I'm going to dig into the other half with this one, and that way I'm saving gloves as well. But if you don't care, then that's fine too. Okay, so we'll call that one. Roll it like that so that it makes it skinny and We'll just pop right out. Okay, so we got two. You'll find that it'll get a little bit of residue and it's not as easy to get them out after about three or four of these. So I end up just changing out my cups every so often. See that this one's kind of a grey colour. The reason that they do that is so that you can tell when the product is complete, is totally mixed. If both were white, then uh, you would not, you would be able to tell if there were areas that hadn't been mixed together.
Okay, so let's call that call that done. And then it's just a matter of just mushing them together. You notice it's kind of hard to mix it first because it's uh, not warm. The more you the more you mix it, it'll kind of warm up a little bit. They'll mix together. This grey is much softer than the white, so you'll get like a real kind of soft, soft blend going. And you want to mix it until there's no marbling at all in the dough. You can see right now there's sort of some swirlies and some marbling. You don't want any of that at all. You want it to be all one even light grey colour. You're gonna find there's like little lumps. This white, this white one, likes to get kind of crusty fast. So try to make sure that you mush up any of these little lumps that you find. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with uncured areas in your in your dough, which will undermine the strength of your mold. See there, just little pebbles of hard white. Just Now the reason that that happens is just because this stuff is a little bit old. I've had it for over a year, so... Okay, so we've pretty much got rid of all of the marbling. I'm just checking for lumps right now. If you've got a new kit, you probably don't need to do this step because you're not going to have the same issue with the lumps as what, as what I have. But if you find your products a little old, this is sort of how you do it. Now the temptation is going to be to leave it in one big lump. But this material is... Uh, it's one of those materials where the more that you have together, it kind of builds this this kind of synergistic thing where it, it'll kick much faster if it's in a big lump than it is if it's spread out. So you want to kind of just make like a make like a pizza. Kind of spread it out like that, and you'll find that it's uh, it'll last a little while longer. A little bit of marbling still there. Okay, just going to change my gloves over. This particular dough, 
um, is designed where it's supposed to sort of stick to the to the epoxy gel coat. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's a little unre unreliable. So what I like to do is create like a like a bonding slurry uh, of epoxy and epoxy dough that can kind of make sure that we have a nice hard uh, bond, strong bond. And it also serves as a secondary gel coat reinforcement because it's got the laminating resin in there as well. So if there's any areas on our gel coat that are a little thin or maybe there's a dot here or there that we missed, this will be able to, to fix that. So to do that, I'm just going to put a hundred and then it's fourteen of the fast hardener. stir stick and we just give it a really good stir make sure we mix that in and we just take some of this dough and we just kind of mix the two together into a sort of a slurry paste So it should should end up just being like a fairly smooth smooth paste that's uh, kind of grey. So we're going to take this, this slurry. Now this slurry will also prevent us from having any gaps in our dough. And uh, I'm just going to paint. So we don't want to go too crazy with it, but we want to make sure we get into all of the details. You can go a little harder, a little faster because your, your gel coat's kind of largely protecting your, your sculpt. So I keep getting my arm in the shot. You can see it's not a super thick layer. Just kind of a your basic of light brush on coat. If you do too much it's going to make it really gooey when you start pressing your, your dough into it. So, okay. so that's probably a good amount. So we've got quite a bit left. We probably didn't need to use quite that much. So that's some waste. So. Oh well. 
maybe knock it down to 50 or even 40. Okay, so basically we're going to take uh, some lumps of this stuff and we're going to start just by going around the edge here. Okay, now you want to make sure that you're pressing this so that the edges go thin. You don't want to have a big chunky thing and then you put the next thing in as a gap. You want to make sure that you can push this down. You can see how the gel coat's kind of oozing out over the, uh, over the edge. That's good because that means when you put your next one on, it'll bond the lumps of dough together as well. So all your edges should be sort of pressed down to sort of thin out into the, you know, the slurry coat. And you can see that, that, that pressing the dough down is kind of squeegeeing that uh, slurry coat over the surface of the sculpt or of the gel coat. So it's kind of filling in all of the little details that maybe could have had a small air pocket. Okay, so the whole thing is covered now, and uh, so now it's just a matter of kind of filling in gaps to make it uh, more pretty and uh, throwing a relatively flat surface for the top. The reason we want the top to be flat is so that when we're running it, we can just turn it upside down and it'll sit on the table.
sure you keep working that edge. You don't want it to go over the edge of that, uh, over the edge of where the gel coat was. Looking at that, it's looking fairly even. Um, just uh, scrape up some of this excess dough. So that it doesn't go to waste. Uh, throw some in there to even that out. A bit in there. And that surface is quite lumpy and uh, there's lots of little bits and pieces that are going to be hard to lay our fiberglass into. So what we want to do is we want to finish this down so that it uh, so that it's nice and smooth and much more easy to to lay our, our fiberglass mat. Fiberglass mat is is fairly stiff and so when you put it on, it'll just sit right over the top of these highest points. It doesn't conform into all these little ridges and nooks and stuff. So we want to make sure that we, that we smooth it out properly. So to smooth this down, as we were talking about with the 1630, uh, every material that we use has a certain, has a certain product that will uh, smooth it out, finish it down. For a silicone, it's alcohol. For 1630, it's acetone. For dental acrylic, it's acetone. For this epoxy dough, it's actually water. So I've just got a thing of water here. I'm just going to sort of dip in and start uh, start rubbing. Now you don't want to go too crazy with the water because it will turn it into like a slop, sloppy, mushy mess. So you want just enough to be able to activate that, uh, that top layer and uh, turn it into like a smooth kind of pasty.
just going to use a kidney here, make sure it's nice and wet if you don't want it to stick to it. And I'm just going to just to smooth this down a little more. Okay. And then we just lightly smooth it out with our hands. Just get rid of any of those little ridges that were maybe caused by the uh, kidney. And we're done. Now we leave that to, to set, which will take probably four or five hours, maybe six. And we'll come back when it's done. First thing we need to do before we fiberglass this, this is all nice and hard. Um, first thing we need to do is to get some fiberglass finishing cloth. Make sure that our finishing cloth that we have is large enough to cover the whole the whole thing which it appears to be perfect so let's get on with putting the fiberglass coat on this and then we just have to clean it and, uh, and then we can run it so we mix up some laminating resin I normally do it at a hundred at a time otherwise it can uh, kick faster than you can lay the glass especially if you're starting out I just find that it's uh, easier easier to do it in batches and uh, normally takes maybe three three batches and I think that this is four to one on the laminating resin So put 25. Okay. Now the first thing I do when I'm uh, 
clean glass. Just give it, a, just give it a good wet down. Just want to wet the whole thing down so that the fiberglass will stick to it. Now this epoxy, if you're using regular fiberglass, uh, like a um, like a polyester resin, it will it'll get into the fiberglass mat much easier. Uh, but the epoxy doesn't seem to want to absorb into the mat as fast or as easily. So that's why I said earlier that I prefer to use the loosest weave of the mat, the lightest gauge mat that you can. Uh, the mat, the only thing that the mat is there for is to protect the dough, because the dough is still, even though it's hard, it's still, uh, it's still not super strong. So, just get some of that, place that on. Now you never want to try and bend a piece of mat over the edge here. It just it just doesn't want to do it. You can have these loose these loose pieces here. They'll 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 go over fine. But a whole piece of mat, uh, you'll never get a nice a nice um, close sort of uh, connection with the with the dough without having air bubbles. So I normally just run it like this so that I've got just some loose fibers going over the edge and then do it that way. Now you can tend, you, it seems that you can bend mat one way and it does okay. It's never going to go around a really sharp corner and this is probably a little sharp than, sharper than what the, uh, the mat likes to go over. But, uh, but if you're trying to have a two way bend, so this way and that way, it's going to pucker up here. So you just want to try and, you know, as I said, the, the, the little loose strands, they'll go over pretty well. I like to put a good two layers of, uh, of mat, and what I normally also do is I'll reinforce through just this middle section here with maybe four or five layers, because that's where we strap it, and we strap it pretty hard, so we want to make sure that we've reinforced that area so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't distort and, and damage it. And you'll get, you'll get pretty good at being able to pick where certain bits will fit. And you want to make sure that you're stamping it down so that there's no, no air bubbles. You don't want to see any air bubbles in it. Any air bubbles are going to be a weakness in your fiberglass. So, and then we just overlap it. So it's kind of like a paper mache type deal, if you've ever done that. Where you're just sort of wetting it down and overlapping, overlapping, overlapping and building up. And again, just have the little, little individual strands just kind of poking up over that edge. And then we can kind of just work them over like that. You can get a little bit like that. Kind of lay it, lay it over because it's not so wide. So it's only bending that one way. Uh, if you're trying to do it with any more than just a thin little strip, as I said, you're going to end up not wanting, not wanting to. It's going to not want to bend in both directions at once, and you'll end up with it puckering away from your dough.
I'm going to find a piece that's flat, that's from the edge, just to put right along here. When you get your mat, you'll find that some parts are, the edges are flat because it, uh, this one might be a little too big. I don't want to lay down. Oh no, that seems to have laid down okay. So we'll go around with just a single layer at first, just overlapping. Some people like to wet the fiberglass down before they actually put it on the put it on the form. I find that incredibly messy. You may get a better better saturation of your mat though, so I can't really say that it's not it's not a good technique. It's just not a technique that that I use. You want to just kind of make sure that you've pushed that mat in all the way around the edge so it should sort of curve under the edge and that'll give you a much nicer much nicer mold. It'll be a much closer much closer casing the glass casing. You'll find bits that look a little light, so you can just kind of Add a little bit if it's looking really grey. Should start to get this kind of greeny, greeny tinge to it. We're almost done with our first, our first layer, first pass of mat. Okay, first pass complete. Almost out of juice, so we we'll need to re redo that once we run out. Just going to add a little more reinforcement here on this corner.
Okay, so we've got a little bit extra on the sides here. Time to mix up some more of this. Put down a bit of that to protect my scale because it gets really juicy after a while. It's a little messy doing this. Now if you're quick you'll be able to use the same cup and the same brush. When it starts getting a little stiff and gooey you probably want to change it over. So we'll start I guess down here. And you'll see that the second layer starts to look a lot more that, that kind of pastely green color. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Smaller pieces lay down better than larger pieces unless it's a very flat side. Like these sides are very flat, you can usually do bigger pieces, but around the front, the top and the bottom, it's a little bit more of a curve. You'll like to maybe just break up the pieces. You can just tear them by hand. Some people cut them into squares. I don't like that myself. Uh, that's just personal preference. I like to have the the, the stringy bits hanging off the edge. I don't like having the visible lines, 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 lines where we lay the thing and I feel that this gives a a prettier finish and it allows us to have these areas that we can kind of work up over the edges of things. So again, just personal preference. As you work in different people's shops you'll find that uh, each shop has its own its own uh, sort of process that the owner of that shop likes to likes to follow so just be open-minded and flexible nothing worse than someone coming into your shop who's been working somewhere else and everything that you do is like well we used to do it this way or we used to do it that way drives shop owners crazy and they're not going to want you there anymore so you know as you increase your skills you'll find that you'll learn multiple ways of doing things and uh, so anytime I've worked in someone else's shop if it comes to a thing where it's like well I know a couple of different ways I'll just say to them hey you know do you have a preference on how you do this do you want it done this way do you want it done that way um, and most of the time that, that they will actually have a preference that they like and they'll say actually I'd like it done this way you're like yep not a problem at least that way you're showing respect to them as the shop owner and uh, you're also demonstrating that you have a broader skill set, so you'll get more respect. Doesn't really matter how much you know, there's always more you can learn in this field. And once you start um, thinking that you know everything and stop viewing yourself as a student anymore, then you stagnate and uh, stop learning and you actually regress in your work. So, always be humble, always be teachable, always look for anything you can learn uh, in any situation because there's always something you can learn. I learned something from almost every single person I work with, even my students. little tips, little tricks, things that people have picked up along the way and it's like wow that's a that's an amazing little little tidbit and I'll totally steal it and start using it because that's what we do
So you can see we're getting a pretty good uh, sort of green tinge going through here, which is nice. That's what we're wanting. Tedious going watching me fiberglass this, but uh, I figure it gives us an opportunity to sort of have a chat about a few things. And if you've got any questions about any of the stuff in any of these tutorials, you can uh, just post them in the comments underneath and, and I'll answer those. If there's any particular things that you want me to cover, um, then that you know I'd like a tutorial on this or I'd like a tutorial on that um, you know I can certainly look at that and try and help you guys out with the stuff that you're wanting there are some things that I make a living teaching and so I can't just kind of give those courses away because um, I travel all over the place teaching so some things I'll have to sort of leave for those classes, but uh, I used to put a little groove here for the mold strap, but uh, I don't do that anymore. It's very hard to lay lay mat down into it, so you have to tear off tiny little bits and you know just sort of have the the frayed edges going in, and it ended up being more more trouble than it was worth, so I just, uh, now I just use some little epoxy putty and put some feet on it, which creates a groove, picked that up from a video from Stan Winston School, I think Rob Freitas, I think was one of his tutorials I was watching, and as I said, good technique, totally stole it. <laughs> So I think we're pretty much good with our second coat. Uh, I might just, there's a couple of little spots that look a little grey. I might just uh, add some little extra, extra gloss there. It's always advisable to wear gloves when you're handling fiberglass because uh, it can make your skin kind of itchy. Now there are some people, when it comes to putting the, the finishing cloth on, some people like to cut it into squares and just put them on. I think that looks kind of ugly myself, so I always like to try and do it in one piece. And uh, sometimes it takes a little doing, but you can kind of stretch it and 
flatten it and you know it does have a two-way two-way kind of stretch you want to try and avoid these little puckers that, you, that it's going to want to try and pucker so you can kind of see how, how I'm just kind of walking it around before I go and really lay the lay the resin in and you want to tuck it all the way around the edge there's a little Now the only time you're not going to be able to do it definitely in one piece is if it's a concave, say the inside of a core, if you're making your core out of fiberglass, then what I normally do is I'll just put a slit and then just overlap it and then glass it and then you've only got the one seam which uh, I'll make sure I slather with enough resin that it kind of gets rid of any spikiness. It's going to want to come out from being tucked under there. So just don't make sure you don't let it. Make sure that you keep just going back and tucking it under. The last thing you want is down here to have your, your dough here and then your fiberglass flaring out and having a gap. You want to tuck it under so it's always in contact with your, with your dough. Now it's just kind of called uh, chasing the, the areas that don't want to take the mat. I've got a little bit of brush. That's fine. There are areas that just look like raw fiberglass cloth, so you just got to kind of keep looking at it and adding more and adding more and adding more till, till you get that uh, all. And you notice that I'm, when I'm doing the fiberglass, I'm actually stamping it. I'm not brushing it. You don't want to move the mat around. You want to just kind of stipple it and work it that way. This will take probably about another three or four hours. Again, the uh, molding it with the syntactic dough and fiberglass is not a quick process. If you have a really sharp turnaround time, um, that you you know maybe you just need to have it molded and and running within a day, I would maybe check out the tutorial on UltraCal 30. I mean, on uh, sorry TC1630 um, or UltraCal. Uh, UltraCal, if you only need a few pulls, UltraCal is a good, in a, you know, inexpensive option for you. If you're needing something that you're going to have to pull like 50 to 100 to a couple of hundred pieces out of, um, then you're probably going to want to go with the uh, 1630. So there's a tutorial coming where we actually mold something in 1630. We actually produce this this part of the mold using the, the 1630, and uh, that's a it's a very viable option. A little more expensive, but much faster. Okay, so I'm going to call that done. Now that's going to sit there for, I guess, the next four hours, maybe five. When I come back and, and touch it and it's no longer tacky, uh, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put your feet on and how to clean up the edges of your mold. 
I'll see you in a bit. Fiberglass is nice and uh, nice and dry at this point, which is great. So let's go ahead and put these put these little feet on. So got some of this plumber's epoxy. And uh, takes about 20 minutes to set up, so it's pretty quick. And this will give us a really nice, uh, nice even base. I mean, although this is pretty nice and it will sit flat, it uh, it's not perfect, and it also doesn't leave room for the for the mold strap in case we want to re readjust the mold strap. So. Take out some of this. So you just Mix this all together till it's one solid, one solid color. I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to just give this a nice coat of some mold release. You don't want to get any on your fiberglass because then your your feet won't stick on it. Break that in half, then in half again. We work it into the texture of the fiberglass there a little bit. Then we're going to take our released board. I'm just going to do that. And then uh, we'll see you guys in about 20 minutes when those are set up. Okay, it's now done. Time to go ahead and Remove that from the board.
Okay, all of this edge will get ground off in a, in a little bit. You can see that there's no flare out where this fabric sort of flares out that exposes the dough, so that's good. So using a little crane technique, obviously because this still has some uh, these ridges around it, I had to use some shorter bits of wood that would fit in. But uh, we got that open, and uh, now I'm going to go to the grinder, and I'm just going to grind this edge, this this down flush with that, and uh, then I'll clean it out. Out. I just got to grind this down and we're done. Make sure that you wash this and the core out really well after you've been grinding because it's got some fiberglass dust in it and fiberglass dust will make the skin itchy. You don't want to be running a prosthetic in uh, a mold full of fiberglass dust. But apart from that, we're all, we're all ready to go. Thanks for watching.